During World War II, Ukraine, like many other European countries, experienced complex and varied interactions with Germany. These interactions evolved over the course of the war. Initial invasion and occupation, 1941. In June 1941, Nazi Germany launched Operation Barbarossa, invading the Soviet Union and quickly capturing large parts of Ukraine. Many Ukrainians initially welcomed the German invaders, viewing them as potential liberators from Soviet rule. Some Ukrainians, particularly in western Ukraine, saw the Germans as allies against the oppressive policies of the Soviet regime. These early interactions led to the formation of Ukrainian nationalist groups and paramilitary units that collaborated with the Germans against the Soviets. Ukrainian nationalist movements. The most prominent of these nationalist groups was the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, UNT, led by Stefan Bandura. The AUN sought to establish an independent Ukrainian state and saw the Germans as a means to this end. They hoped that by collaborating with the Germans, they could achieve their goal of Ukrainian independence. However, their relationship with the Germans was complex, as the Nazis did not support full Ukrainian independence. Volunteer Units Some Ukrainians joined volunteer units within the German military, such as the 14th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS Galician, which was comprised of Ukrainian volunteers. These units fought alongside German forces on the Eastern Front, the formation of this division was the result of complex geopolitical factors and the aspirations of Ukrainian nationalist groups, particularly the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, led by figures like Stepan Bandera. To some Ukrainians, collaborating with Nazi Germany seemed like a path to achieving their long-cherished dream of an independent Ukraine. The division's composition reflected this alliance. Ukrainian volunteers, motivated by various factors including a desire for independence, opposition to Soviet rule, and ideological fervor, joined its ranks. It was a unique amalgamation of fighters who saw the Germans as potential allies in their struggle against the Soviet Union. The division was deployed primarily on the Eastern Front, where it engaged in fierce battles against Soviet forces. Its combat record was marked by intense fighting in Ukraine, Poland, and other Eastern European regions. The division became a symbol of Ukrainian resistance to Soviet communism. However, the division's history is fraught with controversy. Its collaboration with Nazi Germany, a regime responsible for some of the most heinous crimes in history, has led to divided opinions. Some argue that it was a pragmatic response to the dire circumstances of war, while others see it as a dark chapter in Ukrainian history. After World War I, e many members of the division faced legal consequences for their association with the Nazis. Others continued their fight for Ukrainian independence, often leading to conflict with Soviet authorities. The legacy of the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SA remains a topic of debate. It serves as a stark reminder of the complexities and moral dilemmas faced by individuals and groups caught in the maelstrom of World War I, where alliances were sometimes forged out of desperation and the pursuit of national aspirations in a world engulfed by conflict, massacres, and atrocities. As the war progressed, the Nazi occupation became increasingly brutal. Ukrainian collaboration with the Germans led to some Ukrainian units being involved in atrocities against Jewish and Polish populations in Ukraine. Notably, the Ukrainian insurgent army, UPA, an offshoot of the Aun, engaged in violent conflict against both the Germans and the Soviets. Changing Alliances As the tide of the war turned against Germany, some Ukrainian nationalist groups reconsidered their alliances. In 1943, the Onbi faction, led by Bandera, declared an independent Ukrainian state and launched a campaign against the Germans. Meanwhile, the Onem faction continued to collaborate with the Germans until the end of the war. Soviet Liberation As the Soviet Red Army advanced through Ukraine in 1944 and 1945, many Ukrainians found themselves caught between the retreating German forces and the advancing Soviets. The final years of the war saw widespread destruction in Ukraine, and the Soviet Union reasserted control over the territory. The first Battle of Kiev during World War II took place from August 23 to September 26, 1941, and it was one of the early major battles on the Eastern Front following the launch of Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Here are some key points about the first Battle of Kiev. Context. Operation Barbarossa, which began on June 22, 1941, was the German invasion of the Soviet Union. The primary objective of this massive military campaign was to conquer the Soviet Union and eliminate it as a potential threat to Nazi Germany. German advance. The German Army Group South, under the command of Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt, was tasked with advancing into Ukraine. Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and a major urban center, was a key strategic target for the Germans. 
Soviet defense. The Soviet forces defending Kiev were under the command of Marshal Semyon Budyani. The Red Army put up strong resistance but was eventually pushed back by the advancing German forces. Encirclement and Siege the Germans employed a tactic of encirclement surrounding the city of Kiev and trapping a large number of Soviet troops within the encirclement. The city was subjected to a siege, with the German forces attempting to starve out the defender. Fierce fighting. The battle for Kiev involved intense and often brutal fighting, as both sides were determined to secure or defend this strategically important city. Street to street to street, combat occurred within the city, and the surrounding areas witnessed heavy clashes. Soviet withdrawal. As the situation in Kiev grew increasingly dire for the Soviet defenders, Marshal Badiani ordered a withdrawal of Soviet forces from the city to avoid complete encirclement and annihilation. This withdrawal, known as the Kiev Defensive Operation, was carried out under difficult circumstances. German victory. Ultimately, the German forces emerged victorious in the First Battle of Kiev. They captured the city on September 26, 1941, marking a significant gain in their advance into the Soviet Union. Aftermath, the capture of Kiev was a major success for the Germans, but it did not lead to the immediate collapse of the Soviet Union, as they had hoped. The battle resulted in significant casualties on both sides, and the Red Army would continue to resist the German advance in other areas of the Eastern Front. Continued fighting, despite losing Kiev, the Soviet Union continued to wage a determined defense, and eventually launched counteroffensives that would push the German forces back in subsequent years. The First Battle of Kiev was a pivotal early engagement in Operation Barbarossa, and it demonstrated the tenacity of both the German and Soviet forces. It was followed by further battles and campaigns on the Eastern Front, which would ultimately shape the outcome of World War II in the European theater. The Second Battle of Kiev, also known as the korshun cherkasy Pocket, took place during World War II from January 24 to February 16, 1944. It was a major military engagement on the Eastern Front between the Axis forces, primarily the German Army Group South and the Soviet Red Army. Context. The battle occurred as part of the Soviet Winter Offensive of 1943-1944, a series of offensives launched by the Red Army against the German Eastern Front to push the German Eastern Front to push the Germans back and eventually liberate Soviet territory. German position. The German Army Group South, which had been weakened by earlier Soviet offensives, was holding a defensive line along the Dnieper River, with Kiev as a key stronghold. The city had been under German occupation since 1941, Soviet offensive. The Soviet forces, led by Generals Georgi Zhukov and Nikolai Vatutin, launched a massive offensive aimed at encircling and destroying the German forces in the Kiev region. They managed to create a pocket by encircling a significant portion of the German forces. Encirclement. The encirclement of the German forces, known as the korsun Cherkasy Pocket, was a brutal and protracted battle. The trapped German troops faced dire conditions, including freezing temperatures and limited supplies. Attempts to break out. German commanders, including General Erich von Manstein, attempted to break the encirclement and rescue their trapped troops. The breakout attempts led to intense fighting, but the Soviets were able to maintain their encirclement. Soviet victory. The Soviet Red Army ultimately achieved victory in the battle, with many German troops either being killed, captured, or forced to retreat. The battle represented a significant Soviet success and contributed to the overall momentum of the Soviet offensive on the Eastern Front. Aftermath, the Second Battle of Kiev marked a turning point on the Eastern Front as the Soviets continued to push the Germans westward. It also demonstrated the ability of the Red Army to conduct large-scale encirclement operations effectively. The Second Battle of Kiev was a critical episode in the Soviet Union's efforts to liberate its territory from German occupation and played a role in the eventual defeat of Nazi Germany in World War I. As we conclude our journey through the tumultuous pages of Ukraine's history during World War II, it is important to remember the resilience of its people in the face of unimaginable challenges. Ukraine bore witness to both great suffering and acts of heroism during those dark days, from the complex dynamics of collaboration to the valiant resistance against tyranny. This chapter of history serves as a testament to the enduring spirit of the Ukrainian people, who like many others around the world, face the horrors of war with courage, determination, and the hope for a better future. As we reflect on the past, let us remember the sacrifices made and the lessons learned, ensuring that the stories of Ukraine's wartime experiences continue to serve as a reminder of the enduring pursuit of peace, freedom, and justice for all. Thanks you for watching.